Jack, we got it all apart. We got it all cleaned up and spread out so everybody can see it. There looks like there's about a billion parts in it. And I'm going to leave the blindfold in my pocket this time, and I'm going to let you keep your eyes open while you put it back together. But mm -hmm. we're ready to watch you put it back together now. Okay, right out, off we go. You're going to put the top lever in first, looks like. Yeah, I'm going to put the le top lever in first. Put all the lever work in. Put the underbolt in. Scott spindle in. That fits right down through the bolt. That's right. Excuse me. I'm going to hammer it now. Hammer this home. It's a tight driving fit, so here we go, and use it a punch. Make sure it's fully home. That was a lead vice charge, come in really handy, don't that's they? That's right, yeah. it won't damage anything. Okay, that's, that's it now. The next thing you put in is the top lever spring. This is where my little ingenious tool comes in handy. Squeeze the lever spring up in the vise. Put the holder on it. You've got all different sizes of notches yes, in that little bar. I've got all different sizes of notches. And decide which one you're going to use out there. Out the out the out of the out of them. That one'll do. It. And now it's trapped in there. Place it in the in position. And it's put, hold it in place. Remove the tool and it's in. Aha. Uh -huh. It saves using it saves using a pair of pliers and probably letting it accidentally letting it fly. Mm -hmm. There are that's fastened now. Put the pin in, it holds the top lever, holds the spindle to the lever. And this one's in pretty tight, so we we'll Yeah, this was in pretty tight, but I shall screw it up screw it up as tight as I can and just pull it in. Put it in the vise to pull it up the last bit. Because I banged it pretty hard, the spindle in pretty hard with the, the, with the just to make sure it's a, now I'll obviously knock the spindle over it. So I'll give that a little little tap. Get down that way and make that little tighten it. There we go, that's done. And now the next thing is put the safety in, safety button or thumb piece, safety bar, the, then the little screw that, that holds that. And safety spring. There we go. There we go. Now, 
Next thing to go in is the cocking levers. The, you can't put these in the wrong side. There's a little extension on the inside which goes into mm -hmm. cut out on the, in the body. The, press the little cocking lever spring down. Slide it in. Then this is the this is the left hand side. So we want the one that isn't marked, that's the marked one. This is the marked one. This is probably the best way to do this. Mm -hmm. You need a third Always hand there. The third hand because you'll you've got pull down on the the the, the top and the, the the front and the back of the uh, cocking lever well by hand and Okay, now the next thing is they put the filing pins in on the discs. Now, we you mark, scrape we, one of those little bits so you want to touch them up. We scratch one when we're getting it out, so uh, I'll, I'll just glue these in a glass, glass, gas flame to make them look respectable and we'll put them back in because that's the way they did them at the factory, they just... Now, the next move is... Okay, so those are ready. We're gonna light the lamp. Okay. Light the Thank you. And... And just you're going to heat them just till you get the color you want. That's correct. Yes. And then you're going to quench them, and, and that stops the this. stops the color change. That's correct. You see, it's going through uh -huh. purple. Yes, yes. And there, 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 there it is. I see it coming blue. The got all blue. When it gets all blue, just quench it. Stick it in some oil to stop it going in. You don't want it to go to a, so a light color. There's, there's before and there's after. That's quite a difference, uh, Jack. It's just a, case, it's just a question of presentation. It looks good. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's just starting to turn straw. Straw. The next straw with this colors are purple. Mm -hmm. Then it'll go to a blue. And you're being very slow about this. There's no yeah, reason to hurry. Yeah, because I'm not going to. I nice. just want to catch it in the right color. Uh -huh. There's a blue. Quench it in now with a couple of minutes. But I haven't softened them too much. Mm -hmm. Should have used a pair of pliers that were now good. But anyway, there you go. Let me, I'll let those cool down a bit. Uh, well, while I'm waiting for those to cool, I'll just put the next portion. I put together the trigger group together. The furniture? The furniture. Uh -huh. Trigger group. You caught me out there. <laughs> You mustn't put them in the wrong slots. If you remember when we stripped this one down, we found the threads had been stripped mm -hmm. on this more or less. There's just a couple of threads in here just holding it. Then we put in the this little trigger spring. It's got two little 
It has two little prongs on the end which go into two little holes in the, in the triggers from the inside. You slide it in between the two, two triggers and, tur and turn it so it, the two prongs locating the holes provided for them. It's kind of a tricky little operation. There we go, one in. There we are, that's going located. And put it put in the screw that holds it in place. Finally. And That's as far as it will screw, it, screw up, it won't go any further. Oh, it will, just a little bit. Now, the next thing is to put on the trigger guard. And that's the furniture complete. Now, that's that. Now, now the, the, Striker dish will have cooled down. We can, I can wipe some of the oil off them and just put those in. Put the spring on, and then start screwing the thing at home. You can screw these partially on with a, a pair of rows around those pliers. That one's getting rather tight. So I'll pull it up with the, with the tool I've got. I'll go a little bit more, just a little bit more. Okay, there we go, that's top tight. Now let's just put, the, put in the gas checks which hold those discs. It's best to use a vice because you can easily slip out of these things. And there we go, it's fully up. That, that side cake went in a, a, a lot easier than it came out, mm -hmm. actually. I think somebody had tried to turn the disc at some time. There we go, that's fully on. Okay, that's the filing pins or strikers in. And both sides push out all right. Okay, that's complete. Now, the next thing is to put the locks together and put the main sear spring in place and screw it there, put the screw in, screw them fully home. The next thing to put in place is the main sear the main sear just goes in front of the peg on the main sear goes just in front of the the sear spring and then you you push the get in there and then you push the lift up the front of the sear spring I'm going to scoop for the arm there we go Lift up the front of the sear spring so that it rests on the flat at the back of the <laughs> job to do, right. Use the again, you see, use the third hand because lift lift up the spring, 
locate the locate the point of the, sp the end of the spring on the the platform at the back or flat at the back of the main sear. Then you can put in the hammer into its hole. That's the large hole at the bottom, and the hole that's the pin on the outside of the hammer with the gold stripe on it. In the cocking indicator. That's the side that goes through the through the lock plate and shows on the outside of the lock plate. It's got a gold strip in it, which is the cocking indicator. That, go, that goes into its into its little place. There we go. Then you let the seal rest at the back of it. Make sure that doesn't drop, jump out. Next thing to put in is the intercepting seal goes in next, which is slightly to the rear of the into the main sear and that fits in a little hole if I can get in there. There we go, that's in now. Having got that in the next the final the next thing is to put in the put on the bridle which the bridle is the part that holds all those parts together on the plate. It's held with three three screws or pins in in the in the bridle. And what it does, there are three holes: a large one for the for the pin on the on the hammer, a two small ones, one for the which is one for the main sear, and one for the intercepting sear. And you locate them over their respective pins, and with a little bit of jiggling, they the thing will drop into place. Sometimes you have to press up a bit on the sears or push the hammer back a slightly and there it goes. It goes and drops into place finally. And then the next thing is to tighten up all the bridle pins. Right, now, okay, I haven't got that that far. The next thing is to put in the put in the mainspring. Now at the front of the mainspring there's a claw and that fits onto the swivel or as you guys call it the stirrup. Stirrup, yep. At the which is hinged in the hammer. I'm locating the claw of the spring on the swivel now but before I put it in permanently I've got to compress it now I can hold the peg hold the peg of the tumbler of the sorry peg of the spring in the lead jaws of the vice and then compress that You can locate that pin, hold that pin in the lead jaws, and it it holds your spring. You can hold your spring in place while you compress it with your with your um, spring cramp. When you've compressed that fairly well as far as you need to to get it in. You can then locate the claw on the swivel, bring it, bring it sw swing it round and locate the pin in its hole at the front of the at the front of the lock plate. Then undo your spring front, make sure the spring's fully home. There you go. It's, it shows on the outside of the, the spring of the, the pin on the spring shows through the outside of the lock plate. Okay, that's all complete. The next thing to do is to cock the lock because when you put it in, when you put it into the gun, it needs to be in the cocked position. Now the cock it, you just, I don't even see this. 
just push it back with a push the hammer back with a turn screw into the fully cocked position and there you that, that's it cocked now I've just got to put the other one together then assemble the second lock just the same as the first one same procedure that's the second lock completed it's completely assembled now we'll assemble all that onto the stock and then get on with the put it put in the fore end together first of all i've got to put in the little rod that makes the safety safety automatic then i put on the put on the action onto the stock make sure that thing's in the right place there we go that's that's the that's the action located on the stock. Then I put in the trigger plate, or the furniture I should say. Trigger plate goes in. Knock that down. Trigger plate pin, that goes in next. Again, use the third hand because this pen is rather tight the last little bit. There we go, that's up straight. Now the, the next thing you can go in is the bridge pin, that's the long one that goes right through the under the top lever. up with that one last of all. There we are. Pull it home. Next thing in is the hand pin. Finally, the guard screws go in. Front one is the one with the flat on the end. And the rear one is the one with the point on the end. Finally, the put the locks in place. The put the right lock in. Lift the cocking lever at the front of the, at the knuckle. Lift that in the opposite position. Put the nib on the end of the lock in its little at the front in the slot at the front of the at the front of the cut out for the lock and lower it down and. It should go, should drop into place. There we go. That's and the same with the one on the left hand side. Lift up the cock and lever at the front, lower it down, and finally put in the pin that holds the locks in place. There we go, that's all complete. And that's the stock and action com completely assembled. Now we'll go straight onto the onto the fore end. And what I do, I put in the ejector 
mechanism or ejector work first. Put the first, put the two kickers in. You can't, you can't put them in the wrong side. They're only going one way. Line up the holes. Put their axis, their, their axis pin in place. They just been stuck. Just pushes in, in most cases. Then I place the cocking bar spring in place. There's a little hole for it in the, in the fore end, and also a little hole in the in the t in the top of the cocking bar for the, t for it to locate in. Pushing the kickers back, I push this part along with the two ears on it underneath the ejector kickers and lower it down into position and put the pin that holds it in place further back in. There we go, that's it. Okay, that's working all right, quite freely now. I finally put the ejector springs in place. Now the ejector springs, the Right one is marked, it's marked with a little cut on the inside of the bottom portion there, just on the inside, just a little cut. Now, the easy way to put these in place is to squeeze them up and with that little device I've got, put the down the spring, open the vise, the spring out, push the kickers forward, locate, the, put the spring, the little, the, the top part of the spring go, goes into a little slot at the, at the top of the fore end, just there, and swing the, locate the end of the string in the little half rounds, cut in a little piece that sticks up halfway along the fore end. Just slide straight in, take that off, the string's in place. Then do the same with the one on the other side. Now then with the bandy ejector kickers back. There you go. Now then, okay, now the next thing is put the snap in place. And that's just held with one little one screw or pin. Okay, I haven't got that, so all complete now. The next thing is to put it in the wood and there it goes in the wood. Put the diamond pin in place. It's this one. Finally, the tail pipe. We're running out and of parts, Jack. Yeah, well, we're nearly getting nearly there. Okay, that's fully home. Nick, finally, the Hanson rod and spring.
that's about it. Yes, now I finally just tighten up this little stop pin here. There we go, and that's the four end fit finished. Now, then finally, put back in place the extractors. They just slide down their hole, put in the extractor stop pin. Last one. Yeah, that's one, Larry. That's the one we've been looking for. That's right. There we are. That's together now. Finally, put the gun together. One, one, one gun ready, finished, stripped, clean, finished, ready for another season. Jack, I think that's just really, really great work. Sure appreciate the, mm -hmm. the expertise on how to disassemble, clean, and reassemble a, a side lock double. Well, thank, thank you, you very much.